We're starting to see churches fall away by the thousands in this country. And I'm talking about these churches that are preaching that you can go on living in your sin and living however you want to live. As long as you believe you will inherit the kingdom of God, as long as you get saved, there's nothing that can happen to you. You can just eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you die. But my Bible tells me different. The Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews, for if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins except for a fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. It goes on to say, how much sore punishment should he be thought of that hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, where you have counted the blood sacrifice worthy and done unto the Spirit of grace. That means, guys, if you accept the sacrifice that Jesus did for you and me on the cross, and you say, you know what? I've had a rough week. I know this is a sin, but I'm going to get right on Sunday. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this. Whatever it is, it don't matter. If it's sin, it's sin. The Bible says there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Lust, when it is conceived, bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Guys, we are not perfect. We have all fallen short of the glory of God and sin, but if you are in a church that is telling you that you can do no wrong, once you are saved, you are always saved, you can live in apostasy, you can live in sin, you can do whatever you want because you will inherit the kingdom of God, I'm here to tell you different today, guys. The Bible tells me that if we continue to walk in sin, then we have judgment and fiery indignation to look for because we have trodden underfoot the Son of God. There is a deception going on, guys. We see all these things happening in the world while the churches are telling us, hey, don't worry about nothing. All you got to do is come here and pitch some money in the plate and sing a song, and you're going to be just fine. Let me tell you something today, guys. The Bible tells me that sin will send us to hell. The Bible tells me, know ye not that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Now I'm going to paraphrase here. I don't have the whole Bible memorized, but it says that idolaters and fornicators and adulterers and, and, and effeminate and drunkards and all these who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I would rather that you were hot or cold, for if you are lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast to that which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. If no one could take your crown from you, and I'm talking about the crown of righteousness that is laid up for you in the kingdom of heaven, where your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. If no one can take that crown, why would the Lord Jesus have warned you to take heed? Hold fast to that which thou hast, and, and that no man take thy crown. If there, if there was no way for you to lose that crown, he wouldn't have warned you to hang on to it. Make sure that you're not, not slipping into these things of the world. I'm going to tell you something today, ladies and gentlemen. If you are in a church and they are preaching doctrine that is not firmly rooted and backed up by the living word of God, it's time to seek higher ground. It's time to come out from among them and be ye separate saith the Lord, do not touch the unclean thing and I will receive you. You see, the Bible says these things. The Bible tells us in the book of First and Second Timothy, in the last days, people will not endure sound doctrine. That's the word of God. They won't want to hear what the word of God says. They don't want to feel conviction on their heart. They don't want to be told that they have to repent and turn from their sins. You see, the Bible talks about the ten virgins. There were five wise and five foolish. They both believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. They both had the knowledge of the truth, but the five wise virgins repented of their sins and they did not return to their sins as the dog returns to its vomit or the hog to the wallowing in the mire after her washing. They repented from their sins and they turned from it. Therefore, they had oil in their lamps. The five foolish virgins were believers. They had sinned and fallen short just as the five wise, but they had, re they did, they, they did, they repented for their sins, but they returned to their sins. Therefore, burning up the oil in their lamps. And when the, and the Bible tells us clearly what happens with these five foot, five wise and five foolish. When the Lord Jesus came back and they went out trimmed their wicks and lit their lamps so that they could be caught up together with the Lord when he returned. The five foolish virgins says, hey, give us some of your oil. 
so we too can be caught up with the Lord. And they said, no, we need this. You need to go to the market and buy your own. When they went to buy their oil and they returned, it was finished. It was done. It was too late. You, you, you got to be careful, guys. The Bible talks about it. It says in, 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 the, in the book of Timothy, it says, In the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy. That means they're going to be given to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Hey, preacher, tell me I can do no wrong. Tell me I can live and satisfy this flesh all the days of my life and continue in this apostasy, for I will go to heaven no matter what. Why do you think Jesus said I'd rather that you was hot or cold than lukewarm? Do you know what a lukewarm lifestyle is, living for the Lord? It means that you believe. It means that you have accepted his sacrifice. It means that you have accepted the Lord Jesus and you live according to the world. You live a life of sin. He said it'll be better in that day for those who are hot and cold. That's the ones who are on fire for him. And that's the ones who don't even believe it will be better in that day for a non-believer than it will be for a lukewarm Christian when you stand before God. Guys, the reason I'm telling you this is, is because there is a strong delusion. The Bible says that God will send them a strong delusion so that they might believe a lie. Do you feel like that might be happening today? There's a lot of different doctrines taught in a lot of different churches. There's a lot of different things that are taught, but I'm telling you today, if it doesn't come from the word of God, get up and leave that place. You can speak your peace. The Bible says if, 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 if somebody sins against you, if you have a problem, you can go to them privately. And if they receive you, you've gained a brother. And if they don't receive you, take two or more as a witness. And if they don't receive you, then bring it before the church. But I'm going to tell you something, guys. If you go into a church and they are preaching things that directly conflict with the word of God, what are you doing there? Don't sit there and accept it. We are called to be instant, in season and out of season, to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Do you know the most important thing today right now, guys, is not to be focused on this world? The most important thing right now, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, is to be going out to the highways and the hedges, to everywhere. There should be a, there should be a desire right now in the hearts of all men and women who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ to go out into the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. We should go and tell them of the treasures that we found, the joy unspeakable, the peace that surpasses all understanding, and let the world know, hey, this place is going to pass away. This all, Heaven and earth is going to pass away, but these words will remain forever. And I found an advocate with the Father, and He can help you. He can pull us out of this pit. He can save our lives to get us off of this rock. I want to tell you about Jesus today. People talk about having evidence of receiving the Holy Spirit, of speaking in tongues and all these other things. The Bible is clear. Jesus said you can tell a tree by the fruit that it bears. If you want to see evidence of a man or a woman who has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, the evidence is that they will have a joy unspeakable. They will be always ready to give answer to those who ask about the joy that's inside them. They will be a witness unto the world. They will cast down their nets as, as, as Peter did, and they will go and be fishers of men. They will desire to save souls. As the Bible says in the book of Daniel, those who turn many to righteousness shall shine as bright as the firmament and the, as the stars forever. We are not storing up our treasure here on earth. We are storing up our treasure in the kingdom of heaven. What are we doing in these apostate churches sitting around listening to doctrine that has no part of the word of God? I'm going to tell you something, guys. The Bible is clear. If you partake in a sinful lifestyle, you have judgment and fiery indignation to look forward to. There are two types of sin. There are many types of sin, but they're on a, on a grander scale. We are all going to sin. We are not perfect. 
Our righteousness are as filthy rags. We have an advocate with the Father. We are bought and paid for with a price. We are the temple where the Holy Spirit dwells. We're going to make mistakes. God is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. If we wander into sin unwillingly and we repent, God sees, hey, I know you didn't mean to do that. God's not stupid. He sees that you didn't mean to do that. He knows that you fell. He's going to stand you up and dust you off and say, okay, let's go. Go and sin no more. But if you make a decision to walk willingly into sin after you have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. That means the blood of Jesus doesn't pay for those sins that you have decided to walk willingly into. <clears throat> Guys, I want to share with you today that it is time to make a decision with what you're going to do with your life. If you want to know how to read the Bible, the Bible is a very deep and vast book of wisdom and knowledge and guidance. I tell everybody I meet, if you want to know more about God and you want to know more about his word, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We must hear the word, believe the word, not just be hearers only, but be doers of the word. But we must be obedient to the word. 